Hello, hello, hello. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Monday Motivation. And I hope that you are feeling a little bit, at least a tiny bit motivated this morning. So let me pull up a chair and tell you how all of this started. So back in 2008, um, I was really aware of how people in, in the office that I worked at and how people in general, my friends, kind of made Monday morning all bad. It was the thing to be loathed, to be feared, to be like downtrodden about. So I started off by just sending a little motivational message just by email to perk people up. However, when I started this business in 2010, I wanted to continue that tradition. And with the rise of Facebook Live, I wanted to be able to actually bring it alive so it would be of real great content and value to you. So if you're hopped on this morning and you're watching, do say hello. But if you want to sort of sit in the background and just see what goes on, that's fine too. So I want to say a big good morning to you and talk about your personal motivation plan because here's one of the biggest myths that I see. Thank you, France Lise. Hello, good morning. I'm saying good morning back. Um, one of the biggest myths that I um, hear about, know about, see in the, if you want to call it the personal development space and especially um, as a coach is that motivation comes from somebody hammering you to do things and that's simply not true. Morning Ali. So here's the thing, the best motivated people that I know, the most kind of, I want to use the word successful, meaning successful in getting to the aims of what they want to do, are the people that are able to motivate themselves. And you know, who doesn't have a moment in time when everything kind of like seems to crash in and we don't know how to get started. I love that. I love that France Lise is saying, morning Ali. I know that one of you has moved recently and I'm just hoping that everything went well and that you're getting settled in. So thank you so much for joining. So what's your motivation plan? What do you do to motivate yourself? Because if you're anything like me, there are times when the you know what hits the fan and it's sometimes hard to pull ourselves out of feeling motivated. So if you like this subject or if you know somebody that could do with a little motivation, I urge you just to click on the share button underneath this video and share it with somebody who needs a boost. And you know, be one of the things that I really love about um, the people who watch these, whether they watch them live or on the replays, they get all of this, you know, um, there's a thing we used to do as kids where if we were climbing walls and stuff or trees, we would do this with our hands and somebody could stand on it, we could push them up so they could get over the wall. And I feel like you guys who watch these, um, whether you watch them live, whether you watch them on the replay, you are those people that give somebody a leg up. And that's the reason why I do this, because I want to give you a leg up as well. And in turn, your comments, your shares and everything else in turn, do the same for me. So it's all reciprocal. Ian says, A up Jenny, good morning. I love the way that Ian types in his Yorkshire accent as well. So we've got, who have you got on? We've got Ian, we've got Ali, we've got France Lees. Um, we've got a few more because I can see by the numbers. But anyway, let me crack on because I want to honour your time for getting up so early on a Monday morning. And I know that many of you have got school runs and all sorts of things. So how do you know um, the best places to instigate or start your motivation plan? What's the best way to do it? Hey, Claire, nice to see you, morning. So here's, um, here's kind of like, I'm gonna jump to the end of it if this makes sense. Here's a way in which sometimes that like, you know that you could use a little more mo motivation. I know this is certainly true of me and nothing I share here is exclusive to me. This is not a, this is all about you and this is all of your rubbish and I don't have any rubbish at all. I think half the stuff I share, I, I've learned from true dire experience. So some of the things that I wrote down on my notes here were um, judgments. Now, this isn't necessarily judgments about other people or things. These could be judgments we have about ourselves. I certainly know that in the past I've had very like loads of success um, in a kind of wearing my corporate hat on a work way, you know, lo lots of success with relationships, good juicy relationships with people, with my health, with my well-being and all sorts of things. And whenever I notice a little chink in my own armour, 
it's really easy for me to judge myself and go back and say, oh, gosh, I'm so rubbish. I should be doing this by now or whatever. So um, Ian saying, morning, Ali, Claire and France, Lise. <laughs> I love that. So it's easy to judge ourselves and it's easy to judge others because we don't know the full story. It's such an easy thing to do and we can get caught in this on a daily basis without even realising. Another thing we can do, which is closely related, is we, we can become really critical. Again, it could be of ourselves or others. There's, um, I'm going to kind of give you a, a, a quick psychology lesson in like three sentences in that we as human beings, it doesn't matter about our environment or who we've grown up with, we um, have got 24 main drivers. And if you think of like two points, we can be over this end or over this end or anywhere in between. This makes us unique. So for those of you with brothers and sisters, have you ever wondered how you can be so different in some respects from your own siblings? You've all grown up in the same environment, experienced the same things, yet you can be really different. This is the reason why, because we've got these 24 little drivers that, that move things. And one of these drivers is, are we motivated by ourselves or are we motivated for the things that others do? I know that in most circumstances, I'm most motivated by others, which is why it touches my heart when you know my clients and, and you guys and, and different people come back to me and say, you know what, I found this really helpful or this changed my life. So just kind of like to explore really, do you think that you are easily motivated, like self-motivated, or does it start off by just getting an external motivation? Neither's right or wrong, better or worse, just different. OK, um, the other thing is we've got the go getters. So some of the things that I have been talking about with friends, with clients, with peers and, and seeing around me are this time of year requires a little bit more of a, um, a closer look at our own motivational plans. Why? Because 2017 is is coming and a lot of people associate this with a new year and a new start. And before we even get to 2017, we've got Christmas. And Christmas for many of us um, is a time that we look forward to. We have fun with our kids, our grandchildren, our nearest and dearest. But also there's that element of almost being put together with a group of people that we might not necessarily choose to spend our time with. It could be their character traits, it could be behaviours, it could be things they do or say. So for some people, and for in fact many people, this time of year can be seen as quite stressful. And then there's like all the shopping to get done, there's all the food to prepare, there's all the days of extra work, or for some people, there's the days where they don't seem to get too much more work. Now, for my corporate clients, this is quite interesting. So, um, and it's funny because there's kind of two aspects of this. We've got the executives who are running the show and it can feel very lonely. So they need to be able to mo motivate themselves without turning to their teams that they're trying to lead and saying, um, you know, can someone help me out here? And a couple of my clients who are, are employed are finding that the end of year comes like the end of year appraisal. This is a bit where they actually feel quite uncomfortable at having to turn around to their line manager and say, this is where I've been great. They find it quite stressful. Or worse still for some, this is where I've been great, this is where I've added value. And the grandfather in process says, well, you've been really good, you've been okay, but I'm going to mark you down a notch so that we can manage bonuses or pay rises or whatever else. This can feel like quite a disillusion to people. So if anything I've said has resonated with you in that, and I'm just looking to see, um, oh, the other thing that um, has been coming up for a lot of people with this kind of new year, new start piece, it allows people to reflect on how this year has been for them. And this is the stage of year where people are going, this is a write off. This year's a write off. I was meant to do A, B and C and I didn't. Or some people are like, oh my gosh, I've achieved my goals. So next year I'm going to go bigger, better, brighter, shinier. Where do you sit in any of these? Does, does, do any of those resonate with you? If they do, just put like a thumbs up or a heart across the screen. And if they don't, and you um, don't want to say what it is, just put like a sad face or something like that. Um, if you want to share it onto here, then please do. Hey, Alan. <laughs> Morning, Jenny. Alan says, little ripples until my head wakes up. You allow your head to wake up very, very gently. <laughs> so... 
I know that I certainly can resonate with some of those things, whether it's from the judgment side, the inner critic, um, you know, wanting to be more of a go-getter or being that doer and pushing myself. I recognise that in myself, not only from things that I still do to this day, but things that I've done in my past too, which kind of shapes my future if I don't watch out for it. So thank you so much for coming. And as I say, if you like this type of subject and if you've got friends that like this type of subject, just hit the share button either now or if they're up or after this um, broadcast has finished so that they too can go back and get some motivation for their day. So it's funny, I've written my notes on a piece of paper and I can't really read them properly. So if you see me looking like this, it's not because I don't know that you're there and I can see you. It's because I just want to make sure that I cover everything I can um, before our 20 minutes is up. So as we descend into 2017, I'm reminded of something that Wayne Dyer um, recently said. And now Wayne Dyer has passed, um, but I listen to a lot of um, his teachings and a lot of the stuff he says. And before I tell you what that is, this will make a lot of sense into your motivational plan. You'll be relieved. It's a lot easier. I'm not going to send you away with lots of homework. I mean, who feels like they could use a little bit of motivation? Do you? If you do, put a yes in the box or a little heart or a, a thumbs up or something like that. I know that I certainly um, need to motivate myself on a regular basis and I certainly know um, that sometimes I have conversations with people who need like a hug basically, they need a little motivation or a hug. So here's one of the easiest ways, now think New Year come in, think the Christmas period, think the hustle and bustle in the shops, think battening down the hatches. If you've got your own business, certainly some of you will be going into this end of year mode. Hey, Julie, morning. Oh, she says, morning, sweetie. That's made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Hi, Julie. So there's all of these different things going on. One of the best and quickest ways I know that you can um, help to build your own personal motivation plan, that's a motivational plan for whenever you need it, is to surround yourself with the types of people that you that you love that you adore now Wayne Dyer what he said um, uh, and what I heard him say really resonated with me but really stuck in my mind it's something that I see for lots of people something that I almost feel on a visceral level and something that I hear people just not always able to capture and he said and I don't want to misquote him he said this do I want to become like this person? Now think about this. Christmas is coming, you know, we might be at work, end of year appraisals. The best way to choose who you surround yourself with are people that you think, you know what, I want to become more like this person. Now this isn't to say when it comes to family gatherings, when it comes to work meetings, when it comes to going to work, that you opt out don't use that from a place of judgment, okay? Because when you're judging somebody else, you're also critiquing yourself and it's quite painful and it hurts and it's not the most motivational action. But one of the things you can do is start to look at where you're going to go, where you have to go, where you might need to go um, and where you need to spend your time and start to look at, you know, do I want to be like more like this person or these people? And it's interesting because I had a conversation with somebody recently who said, yeah, but you don't understand what my family's like. They're really hard work. You know, I go there on Christmas and I sit around the table and, you know, my aunt Edna moans all the time and she's just really negative. And then I've got my uncle who doesn't say two words and I always feel like he's always judging me or, you know, criticising me. And then there's, you know, my cousin who just gets so drunk that, you know, she always ends up saying something and... You know, there's all these sorts of dynamics. So it's not to say, use judgment and say, I'm not gonna be anywhere near you because you do my head in type of thing. This is just to work out for yourself what you want to be more of, who you want to be more of, and the people that will bring that to you. You know, the fact that you guys can come on here and be saying hello to each other and you're all like, hello, how are you doing? 
that's a really nice space to be on a Monday morning. And that in itself is not only motivational for me to see, but clearly is motivational for you too. It puts you on a, a good start to your day because we don't know what's going to happen in our morning, our day, our week, or even our month. So when you are looking at the people that you want to surround yourself with and be with, sometimes we have kind of like no option but to spend time with our family. Here's a little thing that you can do if you've got an old aunt that moans and groans and complains and does your head in and twists your melon, as I say. If that's the case, imagine showering them with compassion in the same way that you would do with somebody that you do want to spend all of your time with, that inspires you, that motivates you. And regardless of what they say, regardless of what they do, just imagine the feeling of sending them like some good vibes. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to tell them to be quiet. Um, you don't have to, you know, dismiss them or, you know, kind of, you know, diminish what they're saying. Just send them like a big bubble of compassion and empathy. Um, more empathy than sympathy. Empathy is being able to be in their shoes. Send them that. And another question that I often ask myself is like, if somebody is showing up in the world in a way that feels like quite kind of, <laughs> I don't know the word for it, but like wants to stop me in my tracks, I just think to myself, what must they be feeling, like seeing, hearing? What must their experience be like in order to feel or to be like that? So when someone is constantly complaining, constantly moaning, it's likely that they're really having a bad time of things because why else would they want to complain? Why else would they want to moan? So there's a part of me, and I'm like anybody else, if somebody directs that at me, I can kind of get a bit like, whoa, how dare they? Don't you talk to me like that type of thing too. But if I can just stand in the spot of empathy and say, what is it um, that they're going through? Why would somebody say that, do that, be that? Then it allows me to have some empathy, to stand in their shoes and almost answer the question of, like, well, what do they need? Well, they could probably use somebody cutting them a bit of slack. So Julie says, spot on, thinking compassionate thoughts is so powerful and it's a two-way thing too. Absolutely, because let's face it, when you are surrounding yourself with people, and this is all about your own self-motivation plan too, so it's very reciprocal in that you get something and... Um, they get something back and Julie adds that, i.e. what you give out, you get back. Absolutely. Stand in the spot of empathy. When you, when somebody is showing up in your environment that you maybe wouldn't have chosen to spend that time with, so it almost feels like you're forced to be in that presence, stand in a place of empathy, think about what it is that they might need and by giving that out and putting that out, they will feel it on some level. Very much like when you go into a room and someone's like, you know, maybe two people have been arguing, but now you've walked into the room, they're not arguing anymore, but you can feel that in the air. How would it be if that person that pushes your buttons, that, that whinges, that moans, could just feel your vibe of being em you know, empathetic with them, being, you know, giving them or extending them, like cutting them a break, giving them something that they need? Because when you do that, I make this motion with my finger, if you saw it sideways, it's almost like the figure of eight. When you do that and you give something out to them, something better and great comes back in return. And once you can keep that sort of like that vibe flowing, it makes a difference not only for them, but for you too. Suddenly, the whinging on didn't seem to whinge that much. And you find yourself saying, well, actually, we had a really great time. We had a conversation that we'd never had before. Things just felt a little bit different. It actually was okay. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So in terms of your own motivational plan, where is it that you feel you need to be able to motivate yourself? Like kickstart yourself. Is it as you go into the end of the year? Is it as you come into the Christmas period? Is it that at work, maybe not only are you the person on the receiving end of the end of year appraisals, maybe you're the person that has to sit there and kind of like almost mark them and, and um, you know, put them together. Maybe you're the manager that has to do that. 
maybe it's to kickstart some goals or maybe it's to celebrate yourself for achieving those goals. Where is it for you that you feel you need that self-motivation? And then the next thing is really be mindful and join me if you'd like to in an experiment. And if any of you are um, in the Visibility Vibes group, then by all means, feel free to post in there because it's a, it's a closed group. It means that your friends and family can't see what you're posting. Whereas on this page, of course, people can. So to respect your privacy, let's do a little experiment together. Let's go through this week and let's just do a, like a self-reflection, not necessarily a naming and shaming piece, but have a look at um, the people that you want to be with more, want to be like more, or you just like being in their company. They're juicy, they, they've got like that good vibe. Who are those people? And just start to actively be really present in your in your day in your life and start to notice those people and know something although it feels sometimes like we don't have a choice in the matter we absolutely do at every given moment so if you know that you're going to walk for an hour and go to someone's house who's going to bend your rear and make you feel really miserable then maybe you might rethink how you spend that time with them maybe you might even rethink if you spend that time with them so um Ian's saying, I need a kick on these dark um, dark mornings and evenings to get going. Absolutely, Ian. In the summer, this getting up at five o'clock was easy. <laughs> it was light. You know, I could sleep with my curtains open and it was light. Now in the winter, if I sleep with my curtains open, it feels a little bit cooler than it should. And it's still dark anyway. But you know what? One of the things that I found most helpful is looking at how I can motivate myself. And sometimes it's as simple as putting on my favourite record. Well, not that we play records anymore. It could be that you go onto YouTube and just listen to it, or you might have it on your device, you know, that you can listen to. Just to be able to do that for two or three minutes will just get me in the vibe that I really love being in. It will shake me out of the whole, oh my gosh, I've got too much to do mode. Yesterday, I had a nice long bath of my favourite thing and watched, <laughs> watched a programme in the bath so I could sit and relax and chill out. It doesn't have to be something grand. It doesn't have to be something expensive. You might want to take yourself off for a spa day. You might even want to go to a favourite hotel or location near you and just sit there for a couple of hours, have yourself a nice drink or something like that and just be in a different environment. I've known times where I've just been driving somewhere and thought, you know what, I'm just going to pull over and sit in the car or go for a walk, you know, the woods or the beach. At this time of year, if you wrap up warm, it's it's lovely. Many of you know that I love Greenwich Park, which isn't too far away from me. So I can wrap up warm, even though I look like an Eskimo in my hat, and I can go over to the park. And it doesn't matter that, that it's this time of year because Greenwich Park changes throughout the seasons, but it's just a place that feeds my soul. And, you know, there I can regroup because sometimes the person that I want to spend the most time with is myself. It gives me a clear head. It means that I can think straight. I can recharge my batteries before I start bustling into big groups of people. So, um, and if you're introverted, you're more likely to use that time to recharge even more. So, I don't know if you've got any questions. If you've got any questions for me on this subject or anything else, um, or if you want to share what you're your personal motivation plan or just one thing that you're going to do today as a result of you know um, thinking through these ideas then do type in the box and let me know if however you're like you know what I feel really stuck in this area and I have feel I have felt stuck for a long time and you want to chat it through you want to look at working with somebody just to be able to shift those and by all means please send me a message you can do so on this page please send me a message get in contact and let's look at how we might be able to help. And certainly if I can't help in the area that you would like, then I've got lots of different resources. I'm in contact with lots of different people who I know can. So I'll just see if there's any questions. If not, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the thumbs up and the love hearts and stuff like that. And thank you for sharing and coming back, you know, bright and early every Monday morning. Thank you so much to those of you um, that have put your name in so I'll, I'll read your names out and say um, a, a bid you a good farewell and bid you a beautiful Monday morning, a beautiful week and a beautiful month. So um, thank you France Lees, thank you Ali, thank you Alan, thank you Ian, thank you Claire, 
um thank you julie and i see a few more of you on there so um thank you so much for joining me and i look forward to seeing you on the next facebook live which is actually tomorrow um and tomorrow is the tuesday talking tip which is exclusively held in the visibility vibes tribe group so if you haven't already joined get in there we're going to be talking about some really great stuff how do you make plans when you want to talk, communicate, whether it's public speaking or whether it's speaking there? So have a great day too, um, Julie, and I will get back to you about what we spoke about on Friday. Haven't spoken to the person involved yet. And Francie says, sending lots of love to all you guys. Oh, thank you, Francie. Thank you for joining and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.